In this video, we're going to set up Apollo Twin USB to work with Steinberg Cubase on a Windows computer. If you haven't done so, please install the software before watching so you can follow along. The Apollo workflow gives you a near-zero latency environment by providing input monitoring for all live audio through the Apollo interface, essentially replacing your DAW's software monitor function. This eliminates the round trip from the interface to computer and back again. The direct connection to your audio lets you hear, and more importantly, feel your live performance, complete with incredible real-time UAD processing. You can record and monitor through vintage compressors, reverbs, preamp models, or guitar amp emulations with no latency, just like a classic analog studio. Playback from Cubase is merged with the live sound in Apollo Twin, so your audio is always in sync and host computer latency is completely avoided. Apollo's console application is the key to unlocking Apollo's unique real-time UAD processing capabilities. It emulates the workflow of a hardware console and allows you to monitor your audio, patch in effects, and create headphone mixes all within Apollo Twin's DSP. All inputs are shown as channel strips that are routed directly to the monitor output, so you always hear sound, unless the channel's fader is pulled down or the channel is muted. The console's faders, mute, solo, and pan only affect what you hear in the speakers and don't affect the audio recorded in Cubase. Audio sent to Cubase originates either pre-insert or post-insert, depending on the position of the insert effect switch on the channel. When set to record, channel insert effects are committed and recorded in Cubase. When set to monitor, channel effects are heard in the monitors but not printed. Channels can be set individually or console-wide using the global insert effects buttons. Unison preamp emulations are always printed as they're attached to Apollo Twin's physical preamps. Now let's take a look at console settings. Open the console application from the start menu on your PC. Start by clicking the settings button to open the settings window. In the hardware tab, you can set the sample rate, clock source, hardware buffer size, input delay compensation, alt speaker count, and monitor operating level. You also have access to the digital input source and reference level for line outputs 3 and 4. The display tab lets you set console metering, clip hold, peak hold, plugins always on top, device names, and timeouts for modifiers. The plugins tab lets you manage which plugins appear in your console lists as well as their authorization status. You can also access the online store directly from here. Lastly, the MIDI tab lets you set an input device, channel, and note for tap tempo and plugin MIDI. The input device should be set to none when using MIDI outside the console application. To get started, let's go back to the hardware tab. The default settings are a good starting point and can be changed at any time. However, you may want to turn off input delay compensation. Input delay compensation is used to time-align multi-mic applications like drums with different plugins on the channels. Most of the time, it can be turned off to reduce latency and DSP consumption. Now let's configure Cubase. Launch the app and create an empty session so we can set it up for Apollo Twin. First, we'll need to load the driver. From the Devices menu, select Device Setup at the bottom of the list. In the Devices column, select VST Audio System, and in the ASIO Driver pop-up menu, select Universal Audio Apollo Twin USB from the list. Cubase will ask if you want to switch the driver. Choose Switch. You'll now see Apollo Twin USB called out under VST Audio System on the left side of the page, and when you select it, you'll see the complete list of Apollo Twin's inputs and outputs listed on the right side of the page. In Cubase, inputs and outputs are configured as buses in the VST Connections window. Click on the Devices menu and select VST Connections, or press F4. Let's configure inputs first. Open the Inputs tab and recall the 11 stereo preset. It just happens to fit Apollo Twin perfectly. All of Apollo Twin USB's channel names appear in the right column. Note that both ADAT and SPEEDIF channels are present, regardless of Apollo's digital mode. You'll want to rename buses so they appear correctly throughout the app, and when you're done, save a preset so you don't have to rename them again. Outputs are configured in a similar fashion, 
so start by clicking on the Outputs tab and recall the 5 stereo preset. Again, you'll want to rename the buses accordingly and save a preset. Now that the inputs and outputs are configured and named, you'll see them displayed in the routing menus throughout Cubase. When working at high sample rates, the I.O. configuration changes and fewer channels are available. Inactive channels will appear as not connected. As with all interfaces, the hardware buffer size used by Cubase is set externally in the interface's software. Apollo's setup application is the Apollo console. You can click on the control panel button in the device setup menu to open the Apollo console hardware settings. With Apollo Twin, DAW buffer size doesn't really matter because Apollo handles audio routing and processing with dedicated DSPs in the interface, so your latency is always 1.1 milliseconds at 96K. That means you can get your sound dialed in with EQ, compression, or any UAD plugins. You're free to set up reverbs and effects all in real time without compromising your computer's processing power or suffering the annoying delay common with other interfaces. For better performance with virtual instruments inside Cubase, set the hardware buffer to a low setting like 64 or 128 samples. Low buffers use more of the computer's power, but latency is minimized, and that makes virtual instruments much easier to play. For mixing, you can set the hardware buffer high so the computer has more horsepower to dedicate to the mixing engine. You'll have to experiment to find the best settings for your computer. For now, set the buffer size to 128. Cubase automatically sends the session sample rate to Apollo Twin's internal clock, so you can change sample rates on the fly or open sessions with different sample rates without needing to set Apollo Twin. To use an external clock, set the source and hardware settings. Keep in mind that you need to manually set the external clock to match your session sample rate. Cubase has built-in input monitoring options to accommodate different types of I.O. and workflows. When using Apollo Twin, You'll want to disable input monitoring through Cubase and monitor your live audio directly through the console. Click on the File menu and select Preferences. Scroll down and select VST in the left column. Then select Manual from the Auto Monitoring pop-up menu. This mutes the software input monitor so you only hear the console while you're recording. The record-enabled track is heard during playback and is muted again during punch-ins. Virtual Channels lets you send the audio output from DAW applications to channel strips in the console. Normally, Cubase is routed directly to the main monitor outputs on Apollo. Virtual Channels lets you put the output of Cubase on a channel fader, which gives you much more control over your audio. In Cubase, you simply need to assign your track outputs to a pair of virtual channels. You can then link the channels in the console to create a stereo fader. Virtual channels can also be used to add real-time UAD processing to virtual instruments for great sound and feel, and then you can re-record the process sound back into Cubase with less latency than using DAW inserts. Set the output of the virtual instrument track to virtual channels in the console. Apply real-time UAD processing in the console and dial in the sound. Then create a new track in Cubase, set the input to the virtual channels, and record it, complete with processing. There are several ways to set up your headphone mix in Apollo Twin. The simplest is to set the Q output to monitor. Everything you hear in the speakers is routed to the headphone output. Input levels are mixed on console channel faders, and Cubase playback levels are set in Cubase. You control the overall volume with the big knob on Apollo Twin by setting the output selector to headphone. Another simple method comes for free when you route Cubase's outputs to virtual channels. In addition to controlling Cubase's level with a fader for your main mix, you also have a send which can be used to create a separate blend for the headphones. Set the Q outputs to monitor to use the main mix, or set it to headphones and use sends to build a separate mix. You can also create completely discrete headphone mixes using a combination of console sends and Cubase sends. The console recall plugin is used to keep the console's input routing and processing synced to your DAW session. Console Recall takes a snapshot of the entire console and stores the settings when you hit Save in Cubase. Simply insert the Console Recall plugin on a master fader in Cubase and click the Sync button to enable automatic saving. 
In addition to providing direct access to Apollo's monitor control from within Cubase, it ensures that when you open a session months or years from now, the tracking front end will be exactly the same as it was the last time you opened the session. Of course, Apollo Twin's DSP resources can be applied where they're needed. You can track with real-time UAD processing in the console, and you can also use UAD plugins in Cubase for mixing. When mixing, be sure to disable plugins in the console to free up your DSP. Whether you're tracking, mixing, or mastering, Apollo Twin USB provides the sound quality, low latency performance, and power for all phases of audio production. You'll find more information in current software at uaudio.com.